Erev Shabbat Shalom, Rabotai. We are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Gitin. We are up to Perek Zayin, Mishnah Tet. Today's Mishnayot should be Le'elu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Veliao Ben, Burcha Yisrael, Ovchana Bad Miriam, Sason Ben Raya, and Yehoshua Ben Shifra, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. And Avdiu Ben Chaim Lechaim, Vedere Fua Shelemav, Daniel Shalom Ben Roza, Betoch Shach Ole Yisrael. The Mishnah teaches about a case where the husband appointed agents to write and give a get, but stipulated that they should do so only under certain circumstances. If a man said to his agents, if I do not come back within the next 12 months, write and give a get to my wife, get and the agents were to get during these 12 months, and they then gave it to the wife after the 12 months had passed and the husband had not returned. get. It is not a valid get. This is because the husband's condition that the agents wait for 12 months to see if he returns was said and respectable to writing the get and giving it. We assume he had a reason for not wanting the get even to be written within the 12 months. So before 12 months had passed, they were not authorized to write a get. And any get they wrote during that time is simply not valid. Therefore, even though they gave the get at the right time, she is not divorced. Now, in this case, the husband said the condition first and then gave the instructions about the get. He said, if I do not come back, write and give a get. The Mishnah now discusses the law where the husband reversed the order and gave the instructions first and then said the condition. If the husband told the agents, write and give a get to my wife, if I do not come back within the next 12 months, katvu betoch shnei masay chodesh, and they wrote the get during the 12 months, v'nanu l'achash shnei masay chodesh, and then gave it to the wife after the 12 months had passed, and the husband had not returned, and no get, it is not a valid get, because here too we assume his condition was set in regard to writing the get as well, so the agents must wait 12 months to write the get, and if they did not, the get is invalid. Now the next time disagrees, Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, kazek get, in such a case, where he gave the instructions to write and give the get before he made the condition that they wait 12 months. It is a valid get, even if they wrote it within the 12 months. According to Rabbi Yossi, when the condition follows the instructions, we assume that the condition refers back only to the last action mentioned, giving the get, and not to the previous action, writing the get. So they may write the get during the 12 months and divorce her with it after 12 months have, having passed, after 12 months have passed and the husband has not returned. Now Rabbi Yossi holds that when a person gives several instructions and wants them all to depend on one condition, the way he does it is to state the condition first and then list all the instructions. This makes it clear that everything that follows depends on the condition. Here too, had the husband meant this condition to apply to both his instructions, write again and give it, he would have said the condition first. Since he gave the instructions first and then added the condition, if I do not come back within 12 months... We assume that the condition refers back only to the last thing he said, which was give the get and not to both instructions. So the husband's statement is understood to mean write the get now and give it if I do not return within 12 months. Now the Mishnah discusses the law where the husband died after the 12 months passed. If the agents wrote the get after 12 months and then give it to the wife after those 12 months, Vamet and the husband died, the law is as follows. If the get was given before his death, there is a get that it is a valid get. And if the husband did not have children, the wife is not subject to the laws of Yibum. But if the, his death occurred before the get was given, and no get, then it is not a valid get because it is not possible to divorce once the husband is dead. Therefore, the wife is bound by the laws of Yibum. And if it is not known whether the get was given first or the husband died first, though he shamru, this is a case about which the sages said, that the wife is divorced but not divorced, meaning we are unsure if she is divorced or not. Therefore, she may not perform Yibum and marry the husband's brother, but she must perform Chalitza with him in order to be permitted to marry another man. And that is an of Perik Zayin Mishnah Tet. We continue now with Perik Chet Mishnah Aleph. The Torah states about giving a get in Devarim, chapter 24, verse 1, and he, referring to the husband, shall place it in her hand. The, this Mishnah teaches that there are certain places that are legally considered the same as her hand for the purpose of giving a get. If someone throws a get to his wife, 
while she is standing in her house or in her courtyard. Now the Mishnah refers to a house and courtyard that are her milug, that are her milug property, which means that they belong to her, although the, her husband has the right to use them while they are married. And the get lands in the house or the courtyard, she is divorced because her house and courtyard are legally considered her hand and acquired the get for her. Now this is learned from the verse and he shall place it in her hand. By emphasizing the act of placing over the place where it is put, the verse could have said it in the other way, the other way around. And in her hand he shall place it. The Torah teaches that placing the get anywhere that is similar to her hand is enough to bring about the divorce. This includes her house and courtyard, which are under her control and where she can protect what is in them, as the Rav explains, and Rashi explained in the Gemara, page 77a, in Gitin. Now, in order for a property to be considered like her hand, which is always alongside the body, she must be standing either in it or next to it. Therefore, the, when the Mishnah says that she is standing in her house or courtyard, it means either in them or next to them. However, if he throws it to her while she is in his house or in his courtyard and the get lands next to her, even if the get lands next to her in the bed she is using and she is not divorced because the get landed in a place that does not belong to her. His house and courtyard cannot acquire anything for her. Even the bed she uses in his house cannot acquire the get for her since it is his, not hers. However, if the bed belongs to her, and it is high enough off the floor, tent Fahim to be considered a separate area, her bed does acquire the get for her, and she is divorced, as the Gemara writes in page 78a, in Mesechet Gitin. If he throws it into her lap, the part of her shirt that hangs from her lap and drags along the floor, or into her sewing basket that is sitting on the floor, she is divorced, even if she and her basket are in his house, because the area under her clothing and basket is considered on loan to her, while she is using it. A person's possessions cannot acquire things form from someone else while they are in that person's property. Nevertheless, her lap and sewing basket acquired to get from her husband because the husband does not mind if his wife's clothing drag on the ground or if she puts her basket down on the floor. In effect, he lends her that part of his property for as long as she uses it. Therefore, her skirt and basket are not considered to be in her husband's property when the get lands on them and therefore she is divorced, again, even if she and her basket are in the... House. And that is in the Botai of Denise Mishnah Everybody should have an Erev Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.